All right, here we are, dry transformer. Like I said, my inverters are European voltage. Neutral, 240 volts. Two wires, and you can't hook them up in a North American panel and expect that to work. It, it doesn't work, okay? But what does work is you bring the 240 in here, okay? You run it through your high voltage side and then out the bottom, you get line one, line two, and neutral, okay? And that's what the transformer does is convert it to a different output. It just converts the form. We're not stepping up, we're not stepping down, we're just splitting. It's because there's two coils, each coil, when you put your input, line one, line two, it, it, it doesn't matter. The coils are connected at the bottom. They see 240 across them, okay? One's wound one way, one's wound the other way. On the inside, underneath that layer is another coil. That's what's doing your outputs, okay? So you have 240 and 240 going across both coils. They're making 110 on each coil or 120, whatever you want to call it. But because they're wound in opposing directions, they're out of phase with each other. So if you measure from line one to line two, you get 240, 120 plus 120, because they're out of phase. And if you, if you measure from line one to neutral or line two to neutral, you get 120, okay? And then once you convert it like that see that's that's neutral neutral is ground it's all the same that's the center tap of those two transformers and as you can see it does it's not going to shock me it's zero volts all right this feeds coming from the inverters these are the feeds from the inverters and these are the feeds going to the house now the advantage of a dry transformer aside from the fact that it gives you good clean, steady energy. What it also does is for inductive loads. If you look at high frequency inverters, high frequency inverters are a lot less expensive and a lot lighter than low frequency inverters. And you've got both camps. Low frequency inverters are really cool. They are, they'll start almost anything, but they're really heavy and they're expensive because basically you have a transformer and an inverter built into one. In fact, you can go online and get a low frequency inverter and it'll have a dry transformer shell and the inverter is built in the top of it. And that's how they come. And they're six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000, okay? But this way, I think this transformer was 1,500 bucks, 1,500, $1,600. And it's 50 kVA, which, you know, handle 200 amps. So if you take two of those inverters at $550 a piece, that's 1100 bucks plus $1,500 here, okay? You're looking at $2,500, $2,600, and you've got 1,200 watts of power with a transformer. And this will start regular five-ton air conditioner. Okay, this house was not built for solar. Everything in it is electric. It's 2,500 square feet of raw energy consumption. Our electric bills average $250 to $300 a month. More during the real hot months and the real cold months. And sometimes in the winter, we'd hit six, 700 on electric bills. So the house wasn't built for efficiency and solar in mind. But the way that a transformer helps you start a big inductive load is the magnetic lines of flux. If you look at each pole, there's two poles there, okay? With it running like it is now, there is magnetic lines coming out from it. If you could see them, they're there. And what happens when you start a big inductive load is your voltage drops real quick, real fast because of the draw, okay? A high frequency inverter has trouble compensating for that because it has a circuit that says, oh wait, the voltage is dropping. And then another circuit says, come on, hit the MOSFETs with more, open the gate, get some more juice going. But all that takes time and milliseconds count. And a lot of inverters, you just get the tone. You go to start a, a well pump or an air conditioner and all of a sudden you hear, Bee! 
on your inverters and everything goes dark. It's because they can't compensate for the voltage drop that rapidly. Now, if you oversize them, if you've got 50 kW worth of inverters and you're starting a 2 kW inductive load, you're probably gonna be all right, okay? But what happens with a transformer is it does it the right way. As the voltage drops, that field collapses on each coil. It collapses in. And of course, when you bear a magnetic line across a conductor, which the wires are conductors, you've created a generator and that's how they work. So as the voltage pulls from it real hard, the field collapses and generates more voltage mechanically in real time. So that's why when the air conditioner kicks on, you hardly hear a peep out of this thing. You hear that tone that it's going right now. If you listen, you can hear it. <coughs> You'll hear that go, and that's all that happens. The inverters don't see anything. The lights don't dim in your house. Nothing flickers. Transformer handles it. And with a 50 kVA transformer, you get that much inductive kick because of the sheer size of it. It's just one of those things where size matters. Initially, I was learning about solar and I bought the Victron 100 amp transformers that go in line. And I didn't realize at the time those are toroidal transformers. Meaning there's one wire that runs all the way through, through the windings, goes in and out. And the way a toroidal works is it'll dump the phase imbalance on neutral. So if you're pulling 10 amps on this leg and 20 amps on this leg, there's gonna be 10 amps on neutral. In other words, neutral is gonna have power on it. And that can be bad because if I'd have reached down there and touched it, I could have got 10 amps, okay? Whereas this way, your inverters are always balanced because the inverters only see one load, those two coils. And it doesn't matter how much is pulling off of each one, the inverter sees one load. It just makes everything run a lot smoother. And that's how we did the she shed too. I think it has a 37 kVA transformer on it. It's just what I happened to come across, okay? But that's why I just run the European voltage and a transformer. Because those inverters are, a lot cheaper, a lot more readily available, and you can find them anywhere. Now, in the last few years, other guys have really stepped up the game, you know, like Solus and EG4, they've stepped up the game. And But if you go back 10 years ago, those weren't even available, you know? So it's not as important these days as it, was back in the earlier days but still a dry transformer will always give you the inductive capacity that you need all right that's enough on the transformer now we're going to go to the transfer switch this is where all the magic happens okay this is the feed coming out of there and it's hooking into where the utility is and this switch is still hooked up to the generac still online still currently working okay well also like i said the power feeds go through this transfer switch right there and i've labeled it generator and solar and right now it's clicked over to where it needs to be i added all the little relays in there and the wiring i do have a schematic for it i don't have it right here in front of me but this was kind of a build on the fly, but that's what happens when the batteries get too low, sends a signal down here, tells the transfer switch to the controls here to start the Jenny. Jenny starts, power comes back up, it picks generator versus solar, shoots it right over there. Then that transfer switch over there picks whether it's diesel or propane, whichever one's hot, that's the one it switches over to. And then the chargers kick in, charge the batteries. Once the timer shuts off, it kills the signal to here the generator thinks power's back on and it shuts off or if the solar goes completely offline not from low batteries but from like some kind of malfunction then this will drop out 
and when it drops out, then the generator sees there's no power coming from utility because the solar replaces the utility in the switch. It sees no power from utility, generator starts, it pulls its transfer switch over and ties into the mains of the house. So either way, if the batteries get low or the solar dies, either way the generator knows which way to go and which one to pick. And that's just where we used to have a meter. And one day we did, we were all sitting around inside talking, doing something after I hooked up all those miners, because miners pull a lot of power. Uh, that's what that feed right there is coming out of the lugs. It goes all the way out to the mining barn, <laughs> okay? So that I can draw directly off the transformer and skip all the middlemen. We were sitting at the table and all of a sudden everything went off and I was like, oh crap, what happened? It was the middle of the day, it was sunny, everything was fine. I went into the solar room and the inverters were all on. They were all online showing zero load. Batteries were hot and I was like, what is going on? And it actually took me about 15 minutes because I never, never thought that I would, uh, trip a, a 200 amp main breaker <laughs> and that's what had happened. Too much mining out at the barn and too much air conditioner and water heater and washing machine and dryer running. We actually pulled well past 200 amps, enough that the main breaker on the house tripped and uh, the inverters never let go, transformer never let go. So I can say definitively that I can pull 200 amps and all the gear will hold in. Now the breaker didn't, but I do have nine inverters. They're rated for 6,000 watts each. So that's 64 um, or 54 kW coming out of there. And this is a 50 kVA, which kV and KW are almost interchangeable. I know linemen will argue they're not, but they're all, they're basically interchangeable. So I got 54 KW coming in to a 50 KVA transformer and we still tripped a 200 amp breaker. But that's why there's all the cables and the conduits and that's how everything works. And you notice the air conditioner just started. You, you, you didn't hear anything, anything happened right there. Had no problem, nothing flickered, nothing quit. It just came on like normal. And that's because of that big transformer right there. And I guess that's it. I don't know if there's anything else I can say about it. Guess if there's any questions, just leave a comment. I know the wiring is a lot of wires and it's messy. Uh, I know. So, aside from that, leave a comment. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're out.